everyone and welcome to another episode of the subcontinent where we aim to address the most significant issues in the South Asian region that affects the governments, organizations, the people and also the region as a whole. So stay tuned. In this edition of the subcontinent, we will discuss the simmering row over the U.S. move to split Afghanistan's foreign assets between families of 9-11 victims. And angry protests in Kashmir over burning of top anti-terror commander General Ghassam Soleimani's photo by Indian military personnel. Afghanistan is an impoverished country teetering at the brink of famine and starvation. The country is desperately in need of foreign aid to stave off a dire humanitarian crisis. People in the crisis-stricken country are tired of decades-long wars, insurgency, foreign intervention and, quote, puppet governments. And with the rampant inflation and businesses in shambles, the Afghan economy is completely falling apart. The country, which heavily depended on foreign aid, has been on the edge since the takeover of Taliban last August. So what else could disappoint the Afghans? Afghanistan is a country devastated by decades of war and foreign military occupation. The dire humanitarian situation in the country includes, but is not limited to, hunger, poverty and a lack of access to life-saving needs. It is why, like other nations, Afghans continue to struggle with the COVID-19 pandemic. Even worse, there are no jobs. A growing number of Afghans, from laborers to university professors, have lost their sources of income and livelihood. Private businesses cannot fund their operations. They have either shut down or laid off their local staff. The case of government organizations is even worse. Foreign aid made up some three-fourths of the budget of the former West-backed government. Following Taliban's sweeping takeover last August, the U.S. and its allies cut off the international aid and the lack of budget made local organizations virtually defunct. The country's central bank has no access to its own resources to manage the situation. The freezing of assets has spawned what aid organizations describe as the worst humanitarian catastrophe in recent history. While the country's humanitarian and economic crisis continues to worsen, the U.S. administration has displayed utter disdain and lack of apathy, sparking protests in Afghanistan and elsewhere. On February 11th, the U.S. President Joe Biden issued an executive order to unfreeze 7 billion U.S. dollars of Afghanistan's foreign assets. Half of the fund will be apparently used for humanitarian aid to the Afghan people. However, the Biden administration will keep the other half, which will be used to cover the judgments from lawsuits that the families of the 9-11 victims had filed against the Taliban. This is bad news for the ordinary Afghan people, as they had nothing to do with the 9-11 attacks. Following the Taliban's seizure of power last year, families of at least 150 victims of the 9-11 attacks staked claim to at least $7 billion in frozen assets held by the Federal Reserves of New York. They claimed that they were awarded the sum by a federal judge in 2012 following a default judgment against the defendants, including the Taliban al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden. The court required the Biden administration to give its position. This is when Biden's executive order was issued stating that his administration will not object if up to half of Afghans' money is awarded to 9-11 families. It made the Biden administration complicit in the possible transfer of Afghan assets to others at a time when Afghans are staring at a humanitarian crisis. His executive order allocates the second half of the humanitarian aid to Afghans. However, it is likely to take months before the assets are unfrozen and handed over to Afghans. Hence, experts feel it will be helpful in addressing immediate needs of crisis-stricken people in Afghanistan. Uh, the 
Biden's executive order was met with outrage within the U.S. and abroad. Many termed it stealing and theft. The U.S. administration was urged to reconsider the decision through open letters as the reserves belong to the Afghan people, not the U.S. or the Taliban. For President Biden to uh, take half of our national reserves and uh, assign it or dedicate it to uh, uh, those victims is, uh, is, is denying the victimhood of the Afghan people, uh, which is wrong, uh, morally as well. Therefore, I strongly disagree with this decision. We want the entirety of the Afghan assets to be kept for Afghanistan. These belong to the future generations of Afghanistan. These are the assurance, the sureties for our for monetary uh, policies, for the stability of our currency. Uh, therefore, uh, I disagree with it. Now we are joined by Dr. Mohammed Dawood Miraki to further discuss Biden's executive orders on Afghan's foreign assets. Now, welcome to the program, Dr. Miraki. Now, what's your take on the U.S.'s decision to return a part of Afghan's own assets in form of humanitarian aid? The irony is this, what the Biden administration is doing is really a highway robbery, a banditry, international banditry, what they have done. Uh, they they are on, uh, basically uh, continuing this revenge mode that has uh, you know been going on since their retreat from Afghanistan, and uh, and they use the excuse that supposedly uh, victims of 9/11 are entitled to uh, the uh, compensation when in fact Afghans had nothing to do with 9/11. In fact, Taliban had nothing to do with 9/11. And so, and the assets uh, of Afghanistan do not belong to a political group. It belongs to the people of Afghanistan. Irrespective of who occupies uh, the throne in Afghanistan, these assets uh, 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 pertain to the economic stability of Afghanistan and, and it contributes to the economic stability uh, in Afghanistan. And uh, it, it does not belong to any political group. And so, uh, so uh, what they have done is, is basically uh, adding insult to injury by, on one hand, stealing Afghanistan's assets and then uh, giving it back to Afghanistan. But be happy, this is a charity we're giving you and to save your lives. So Afghans are not stupid. They, they understand, they can see through these mockeries uh, uh, and, and concoctions uh, clearly. Dr. Miraki, do you believe the Afghan people are central to the U.S. as aids? Well, uh, uh, the, the issue is this, what they are doing, the aid mechanism that they are following is classic what they do uh, uh, of how they operate uh, almost everywhere. They use NGOs, uh, basically uh, their own, uh, you know, um, organizations, you know, uh, that 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 have uh, you know relationship to USAID and to UN and whatnot, and uh, uh, a significant portion of that money is allocated to the NGOs, and NGOs take a significant portion of that for administrative costs, salaries, and whatnot. And then, of course, uh, considering the U.S. history of how it operates and what its plans are. Uh, we are not going to be surprised that they do not have an ulterior, uh, ulterior motive because it, they, uh, uh, you know, during the uh, Taliban insurgency, when the Daesh groups were uh, present in eastern Afghanistan, and Taliban operated and attacked them to 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 to, uh, to destroy them and so forth, and when the uh, the uh, the um, the um, conflict ensued. The American planes used to come and used to bomb Taliban fighters in order to rescue Daesh and, and the ISIS elements. And in many uh, places, they, when the Taliban encircled them and trying to capture them and, and decimate them, uh, the Americans would come and airlift them and they would end up uh, getting, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> um, uh, uh, taken care of in guest houses and in Kabul and other cities. Uh, so considering that history, uh, I would not be surprised because, uh, uh, and another thing we need to also understand that uh, Western intelligence agencies, they have uh, uh, strong relationships to various terrorist organizations. 
and uh, they use it use these organizations for their foreign policy motives and 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 uh, black ops and so uh, afghanistan is no exception to that but one thing is for sure uh, they do realize that 48 countries have tried to submit the afghans the pashtuns that fought against them in the taliban and but they could not defeat them and i told them in 2002 i told them anybody can enter afghanistan but they cannot get out and when they get out they do not walk out they crawl out of afghanistan and that is exactly what the united states have done they have crawled out of afghanistan so how does the u.s judiciary system find afghanistan's official foreign assets relevant to the taliban while it's not recognized by the administration there are two sides of the story first of all they realize afghanistan has a strategic location uh, it's significant, and, and, and they also realize that Taliban is a reality. Uh, it's not going to go anywhere soon. Uh, it is going to stay there, and irrespective of whether the United States or anybody else recognize it or not. Uh, but uh, the irony is this, the recognition business is uh, led by the United States, and uh, whatever the United States does, the rest of the world follows. Uh, and the, this attempt that the aid that they sent, uh, 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 that's a public relation ploy as well. Remember, there is a starvation going on in Afghanistan, and the United States tries to uh, play down their, uh, uh, you know, role in this nightmare that had, uh, 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 you know, continued after their retreat. This was a, you know, a, a house of cards in an economy, house of cards that collapsed and was a, an artificial arrangement. And once they uh, retreated from Afghanistan, they realized that, uh, the, that their handiwork is going to show, uh, be, you know, visible to the whole world. In order to cover their tracks and, and, and trying to say that they have a humanity, they resort to this type of measure. So we send aid and do this and that. You know, if you, I also like to add uh, the Afghans that they have, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, airlifted from Afghanistan uh, as a, as a, as a, uh, you know, as a way to indicate to the world that they have concern to the Afghan population. Uh, they have a lot of young people that, you know, parents send them because in America it's easy, so they will go there, get educated, and all in all. Uh, a lot of these, these kids, they came here and they were they're extremely, especially in Chicago, for example, they suffer from extreme depression and they were telling their sponsors, please send us back to Afghanistan. We don't want America. We go, want to go back to our parents. But they refused to. Dr. Maraki, thank you for being on the program. Now, let's take a look at people's reaction to this on social media networks. Sanjar Sohail is a publisher based 